Hello and welcome to the fourth video for the Cartesian Geometry module. Here I'm going to talk about graphs of functions. Now unless you've also done the function module, we haven't talked too much about functions. And I'm only going to talk about one example in this video. The graphs of a variety of different functions will be talked about in the function modules uh, that you may be working through in another section of this course. The idea with graphs of functions is that we can understand functions in the Cartesian plane using coordinates. So if I have a function, in this case the square root function, I can think of the right side of the function as y coordinate and the input of the function as the x coordinate. And then I can ask what points satisfy this? What points have the y coordinate equal to the output and the x coordinate equal to the input of the function? For the square root function, if the input is 4, if the x coordinate is 4, the output is 2, so the point 4, 2 will be on the graph. If the input is 9, <coughs> the output of the square root of 9 is 3, so the point 9, 3 will be on the graph. If the input is 16, the output 4, s square root of 16 is 4, so the point 16, 4 will be on the graph. And in that way, I can investigate all infinitely many inputs and outputs and consider them all as a shape in the Cartesian plane given by coordinates where the x-coordinate is the input and the y-coordinate is the output of the function. All those together give me a shape. So here are the four points, I suppose the three points I mentioned plus an extra one. Square root of one is one, so input one, one works. Input output four, two, square root of four is two. Input output nine, three, square root of nine is three. Input output 16, four, square root of 16 is four. And all together I get the shape drawn here. And any other function is gonna give me some kind of shape. This is really valuable because it gives us a way to visualize what the function is doing. This is a picture of the square root function. The square root function starts quite steeply, but sort of levels off as we go along, becoming shallower and shallower, growing slower and slower. And if I have some other kind of behavior that does that, I can visually recognize that and say, hey, that looks like a square root function. Working with functions, having that visualization, for particularly for those of us who tend to think visually, is immensely valuable. It gives us a really good way of understanding what functions do by having a sense of what they look like. Again, this is sort of short at this point in time. A lot more will be discussed in the module on functions where I go through some common functions and express some details about what their graphs should look like and what properties their graphs have.